time has come. The time has come. The time has come. <clears throat> we need to talk about voting rights in America. So who here? Can I get a can I get a show of hands? Can I get a hypers in chat if you think voting is at least kind of cool? If you like the right to vote, can I get a hypers in chat? Can I get a an impo hypers in chat? Yeah, look at that. Looks like we got a lot of looks like we got a lot of fucking hypers in chat. Damn, people really like voting. Well, unfortunately, there are some people in this country who don't like it that you vote, okay? You understand that, right? Many people have been beaten by cops, slammed in the head by brutal overlords, fought Spill against kings, and many other things in the name of getting you the right to vote, okay? And listen, I'm no liberal Okay, I know that there are limitations to the modern neoliberal democracy. We all know this, but I think that we can conclude nonetheless that voting is kind of helpful. Okay, being able to vote and have a say on the things that you do, uh, that your government does, is actually pretty helpful. Now, it doesn't solve all the problems. It certainly does not solve all the problems. Not even close. However, it does allow you to have some sort of input on the decisions that are being made about you. Now, I have lots of problems with this. There are issues with uh, the current form of democracy, especially uh, a democracy where most of the time of our lives is spent in undemocratic spaces like the workplace, where you have no say over what is done to you whatsoever, except for uh, choosing to take poverty onto yourself by quitting your job. Um, but nonetheless, see, the preamble here is to show you that I, I also am suffi sufficiently blackpilled on American democracy to recognize that uh, being able to vote doesn't mean that you have full control over your lives, but it is nonetheless important, okay? The right to vote is an important bulwark against unbelievable authoritarianism, okay? It really, really is. We would rather have some leverage than no leverage. And politics is often about strategy and tactics. Sometimes we have to put on our little liberal mask, you know, put on our little liberal mask. Brunchy, 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 brunchy. Look, voting is not the coolest thing you can do. However, however, voting is important. And unfortunately, we live in a very unique time. You see, we live in a time in which the Republican Party is the minor is 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 it holds minority power in government, and yet because of some uh, unforeseen intricacies of our system, we are unable to actually pass good laws. And this has been the case for a long time. Even when the Democrats have control of the Senate, there are a number of factors that prevent us from making the changes that are um, that are needed, okay? And I'm going to explain one of those things real quick, okay? Yes, ICO rules. ICO rules says it's not either or, it's yes and. Correct. Yes, vote, and what else? Voting is the easiest form of political engagement besides talking to other humans that you can engage in, which is why we're going to talk about it and why we have to actually focus on it. We're going to learn today about the filibuster. So real quick question. I'm going to do a site chat poll. Again, join site chat if you want to be a part of the polls. Let me do a poll. All right, let's see. Do you know what the filibuster does? Don't lie. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Don't lie. This is not to shame you. Please. This is to help you learn. Okay? I want to see. I just want an idea. If you don't know, just say no. If you don't know in full, say no. There should be, but yes. I just want to find out the idea of how many people. Okay. Excellent. 
There we go. All right, that's good to know. There we go. We got about 71% does know what the filibuster does. And the other two, or the other 30% uh, or so, um, don't know. Okay, this is why it is important that I teach about the filibuster. Because the filibuster is currently negatively affecting your life. And let me explain how that's the case. So, <clears throat> a filibuster um, is a very broad and informal term that refers to a tactic in which someone talks or delays for an extended period of time a legislative process. It is also used colloquially to be like, stop filibustering if you're wasting time, okay? Now, you might go, wow, really? That's all that the filibuster means? Well, that's not all of it, okay? A filibuster is uh, basically the way that it works is like this. Um, if you want, okay, so the Senate and the House have specific periods of voting, okay? They have to go and vote for things in person, okay? And there are some various rules about how they can assign somebody to vote for them. They can have their vote go this way or that way or whatever. But at the end of the day, you have to go vote in person most of the time. And voting has specific windows, okay? And there is also a process by which laws have to be voted on to be voted on. So basically, there are so many laws going on that the Senate has to organize on like a sort of meta level when they're going to vote on specific things. Does that make sense to everyone? I hope so, okay? Um, it may, basically, because of physical bodies and restrictions and not everything is digitized, and even if it was, there would still be a requirement to do things in a timely manner because the flow of time always continues. Um, because of all of this, um, if you get a star next to your name, you'll be fancy. Um, because of this, um, there is a tactic that you can use where you talk or present or whatever for so long that you pass the necessary window for a vote. Does that make sense? So let's say that it was planned that today, hello everyone, we are pretend, let's, let's imagine ourselves in the Senate for just a minute. Hello everyone, welcome to the Senate. Today, we will be voting until five o'clock p.m. and then everybody can go home. So let's decide what we're gonna vote on today. And the first person who walks up is some Republican jackass. And he says, I am going to give you a presentation on why I don't think that we should vote on said thing. Okay? Let's say it's, uh, I don't know, a trans rights bill. I don't want us to even vote on this. This is a waste of our time, he says. And so he stands up and he brings out a large, a, a, a large uh, whiteboard. And on that whiteboard is a drawing of a penis. And then he proceeds to explain to you in incredible detail all of the intricacies of this penis that has been drawn on the whiteboard. Every single vein, every single hair, every single bump. Now you might think, oh, that's kind of fun. I like penises. Maybe you don't. Maybe you don't like penises. But then it turns out that he talks about this penis for about nine hours and all of a sudden it's five o'clock nobody has made any votes on any of the things for the day because this guy used his time to talk about a penis that is the, that is literally and and obviously i don't think anybody's ever brought up a picture of a penis but that is how the filibuster works B due to a a strange uh a strange fluke in the rules of the Senate voting system, you are allowed to make arguments for an extended period of time, so long as you don't sit down or stop. So what people will do is they will stand up, and sometimes they will even pass the baton to their to their their teammates, their fellow uh, agreeing Republicans or whatever, and they will just keep it going and going and going and going and going and going until everybody's got to go home. And then the vote doesn't happen. And then if they decide to try and make the vote happen the next day, they'll do it again. They'll do it again, making it impossible 
for the Senate to get anything done. So once, so often what ends up happening, oh, it is an absolute waste of everyone's time. But here's what usually ends up happening. Because the filibuster exists and everybody knows the filibuster exists, if a, a sufficiently controversial piece of legislation appears and it looks like they're going to do the filibuster, they just won't. They will just stop. I like the idea that filibusters have to be on topic, but that's very hard to make a rule for. They're stalling so that you can't vote. And they'll do it again and again and again. And because nobody wants to waste any time, um, because nobody wants to waste that time, um, people will just say, oh, shit, they're going to filibuster it. Let's save our time and let's get rid of this one. So what they'll do is like say like like say that there's five different things that you're going to vote on that day. The first one is the trans bill and you know that the Republicans are going to filibuster the trans bill. Then you say, "All right, we won't vote on the trans bill. We'll vote on everything else." And then they go, "Okie dokie." Okie dokie. And then they don't do the filibuster. But if you say, "We want to vote on the trans bill," then they filibuster you and none of the bills of the day get voted on. And they can do this as many times as they want for as long as they want. One of the most famous, one of the most famous filibusters of all time was literally a guy who got up and read names out of the phone book for hours and hours and hours on end. I'm not kidding you. That actually happened. And there's been a movement for a very long time to close the loophole that allows the filibuster. Didn't Obama add a nuclear option to end a filibuster forcefully? Yes, but it's difficult. Okay, we're not going to get in. We're not going to get that far into the. Um, we're not going to get that far into the, uh, the 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 weeds. Okay, Bernie has done a filibuster. Bernie did a good filibuster. Okay, um, didn't he once read out a sandwich recipe? That's very possible. I don't know about that sp particular one. Um, there have been examples of the filibuster being used for good causes, but most of the time it is used for simple obstructionism, okay? Yeah, Wendy Davis did a 13-hour filibuster in Texas. There have been some really famous filibusters. But the problem is that right now the filibuster is being used so frequently that it is clogging up the, the entire process of law. And there's a number of these processes, okay? Think about this. So uh, has anyone heard of a person named Mitch McConnell? You know, he looks like a turtle. He might be a necromancer. He might be a, a, a corpse being puppeted by a necromancer. Have you ever heard of uh, M Mitch McConnell? Mitch McConnell, when he was the uh, the, the uh, Senate majority leader, um, was famous for having a graveyard of bills on his desk through the entire Trump admin. Not because of the filibuster, but because when he was majority leader, he could simply prevent things from ever going to a, vote, to a vote at all. So the problem that we have right now is that there are numerous ways to play obstruction in the American legal system, and they are in essentially indefinite. So any laws that somebody really sufficiently doesn't want to get passed— won't get passed not e even worse they won't even get voted on they won't even get voted on in a democracy a lot I'm, I'm talking thousands of bills that are addressing serious issues are simply never voted on just because somebody doesn't want to vote on them that doesn't sound like a functioning democracy very very much does it Hmm, very strange. And I want to ask you something real quick, imps. This is why I have you use your critical thinking skills. Who is who is most g given the advantage by a process that allows you to play obstructionist, aka to stop change? 
who wins is it the stat is it the people who defend the status quo or is it the people challenging the status quo who wins when there are rules that say who which ones the status quo people or the anti-status quo people ah those defending the status quo and who in our country are constantly defending the status quo who tell me somebody tell me i know i know some of you know who defends the status quo in our country the gop the gop now there are times of course where the democrats also support the uh status quo of course they both do but let's be real the most of the time this is the gop who are using this and keep in mind Oh, yes, Eurus McPearl, we'll get to the vegan discourse. Don't you worry, we'll get there. We're doing voting right now. This is important, okay? And of course, we will also, you will also, if you use your, uh, if you use your, your uh, critical thinking skills, you will acknowledge that, ooh, wait a second. We are not liberals here. We're not Democrats here. We're lefties here for the most part. Most of us here are lefties. I am a lefty. That means that by keeping the filibuster in place, if there is ever a time where the lefties are challenging the status quo, the, de the conservative Democrats could use the filibuster to do the exact same thing that the Republicans are doing right now. This is a tool to prevent change. This is a tool to prevent votes. This is an anti-democratic tool, okay? Mitch McConnell is literally a ghoul from Fallout. If I ever met him in person, I'd expect that de decrepit motherfucker to call me a smooth skin. You're probably right, Lazy Gales, and thank you for the $10. Really appreciate that. And that brings us to today. Okay? That brings us to today. Now you know what the filibuster is, and you know how the filibuster was um was used. Yes, yes, yes. Uh Brim Brim15 brings up a great point. It was a tool that Jim Crow segregationists used for decades to block civil rights and anti-lynching legislation. Yes, that is its most famous use. Its most famous use is being used to block civil rights change and anti-lynching legislation. Wow. But guess what? We could get rid of the filibuster we could get rid of it right now did you know that doesn't that sound like a great thing we could and maybe in some alternate universe we have but in this universe we haven't and the reason that we haven't is because of joe manchin west virginia senator democrat joe manchin Detour dude with the $5. Life is tough right now. How do I avoid being blackpilled? Ch hang around and I will tell you. Okay, I'm going to save this question and I'll put it in my notes. Stick around. Okay, I'll answer that afterwards. Wait, really? The Twitch title hasn't upload updated? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Let me change that real quick. Hold on. Hold on. Let me change that. I didn't know that. Sorry. That's, that's a big mistake. How did that happen? That's weird. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, it didn't. Fair enough. Fair enough. Oh, it didn't. That's very strange. All right. We'll get this here. Okay. Hold on. Let me get you. Let me get you changed up. Thank you very much. It put me into just chatting, but it didn't change the name. That's weird. Oh, that's unfortunate. All right. Here we go. <clears throat> Thank you very much. No, no, no. You coy, I deeply appreciate that. Thank you. In fact, I appreciate that so much that I'm going to give you this. Enjoy. Thank you very much for reminding me of that. I deeply appreciate being reminded of things like this if uh if it'll go through. There you go. Enjoy yourself, you coy, and consider coming to our website where it's a much better viewing experience. Um Joe Manchin. Let me show you our boy Joe Manchin, okay? Because we got a lot to talk about with Joe Manchin. And I've been giving us a lot of preamble. But you know I am devoted. I am devoted 
to teaching people the things they need to know. So let me show you what our boy Joe Manchin looks like, okay? Here we go. This is Joe Manchin. Senator Joe Manchin from West Virginia, Democrat. He is a right-wing Democrat. You told me your Joe Manchin story? I don't think so. This is uh, Jim Crow Joe. How do you change your name on here, socialist law dude? Uh, just DM me on Discord and I'll change it. Or you can subscribe and use the tool. Subscribers get one name change a month. Joe Manchin is responsible for voting with Republicans or refusing to vote with his fellow Democrats all the time. And he does so by, by saying that he supports bipartisan legislature. He's also promised, by the way, he has promised that he will never vote to weaken or remove the filibuster, which means because of the margin in the Senate right now is so tight that we cannot get rid of the filibuster. He is literally a stooge of the Republicans right now. Can't we primary mansion? Not yet. It's been very hard. It's been very, very, very hard. And he's not the only one, by the way, because there's others. Kristen Cinema is another one, though less egregious than Joe Manchin. <sighs> there are others. But yes, Joe Manchin is the one who's responsible for this. And you might be wondering, okay, so we're talking about Joe Manchin. We're talking about um, we're talking about the filibuster. Why? What is getting filibustered? Oh, Demon Mama, please tell us. I will. Let me show you. Let me show you what is getting filibustered and essentially blocked altogether. Okay? It is an act called the For the People Act. And if you'll sit with me here, we're going to read a little a little liberal article about this about this piece of legislation. Okay? Here we go. A, a, a little liberal CNN politics article, okay? Here we go. Listen up. Listen up. This is important. This is this is the real politics education you come here for, okay? So fucking listen up. By the way, if you're here and you haven't liked the stream, like the stream. Like the stream, like the video, and comment on the segment that this will inevitably be. <clears throat> Sometime this week, the Democratic-controlled House is expected to pass the For the People Act, a sweeping set of electoral reforms that would, among other things, seek to increase voting and election security and aim to stem the flow of special interest money into uh, from unknown sources into campaigns. This is a problem we have in America, okay? In America, we have a lot of issues with special interest money, and while we don't have a lot of issues with standard election security, we do have an issue with voting security. And what I mean by that is that there are many people who never get the chance to vote because they are somehow invalidated from voting. Whether it turns out that there's paperwork that their state requires that they don't have on hand, whether they have voter registration laws that require them to be registered a ridiculous period of time in the past, whether there are obs uh, obscure state laws that say that if you moved, you need to inform the, the voting registration that you moved right away or else you won't be eligible to vote when it, the time comes to vote. There are all of these laws mostly made by Republicans, mind you, that somehow just, oh, conveniently tend to target poor people of color. Interesting how that works. In fact, there have been issues of voter, uh, voter suppression in this country that by third-party analysts have been called surgically targeted at specifically preventing black poor people from voting in America. That is what I think that's what we call a, uh, a, a little sussy. A little sussy. Yeah? So the reason why the For the People Act is currently happening is because we've had a severe issue with voter, voter suppression in America. A lot of people are not who want to vote 
who have the right to vote, who have a constitutional democratic right to vote, are not able to vote due to some obscure technicality that they could not reasonably be expected to predict. And this is happening all over the country. And there's another issue, um, which is, <laughs> let's take a look at this, okay? Let me show you another thing real quick, okay? I'm gonna zoom in real quick on this little image. Let's show you. Let's see if I, wait, how do I get it? How do I get it? How do I do it? Here we go. See this right here? Can you see this here? Let me make sure that it's visible. There it is. See this right here? District 29. Look at it. It's shaped it's shaped like a dying bird fetus. Doesn't that look like a like a bird that that was uh torn out of an egg? This is the district. This is a Republican. This is how they do this is how they district these things. And do you know why they do this? Look at this one. Look at this one over here. Look at how it moves. Look at that. This is Texas right now. And do you want to know why? This is what we call gerrymandering. And do you know why they do this, right? They do this so that they can, they draw the voting district lines so that all of the Republicans are in this district. All of the Republicans are in this district. All of the Republicans are in this district. And then they'll draw these other districts where all of the Democrats are in. And they target it and bend it around. And the reason why they do this is because they can play the game such that even if there's a majority of Democratic voters in a state, the districts will win over to being majority Republican. Am I trans? Yes, I am. They, will, they, aim, to put, they aim to put it in such a way that all of the Republicans... All of the Democrats are contained, sorry, all of the Democrats are contained within specific districts that aren't worth as much. They are cheating. This is not democratic. And this is one of the things that the For the People Act is aiming to change. Yes. Oh, ex exactly. Lucid Days brings up a great point. Texas was almost blue last election, but the gerrymandering made it red. Texas, in if it had been drawn like any sort of reasonable state, would have been a blue state. Incredible. The most important thing, the legislation, which garnered the support of President Joe Biden's administration. So Joe Biden even supports this. Joe Biden. Joe Biden isn't exactly some kind of lefty would do, however, is this. It would remove or greatly lessen the influence of partisanship in the drawing of congressional lines every 10 years. This is a rule that would make it fairer for all people in America. Because right now, gerrymandering favors right-wingers. And even if it didn't, it wouldn't be fair. If it was gerrymandered the other way, that wouldn't be fair. The For the People Act would require every state to establish a 15-person independent commission comprised of five Republicans, five Democrats, and five independents or members of other small parties to redraw district lines following the decennial census and the reapportionment of the 435 congressional seats that follows. That is a big step, but a good step. This is a pro-democratic step. This would be an absolutely massive change in not just how districts across the country look, but in what a candidate would need to do to get elected. Massive. At the moment, the vast majority of states, 31, rely on the state legislature to draw congressional lines following every census. Independent or bipartisan line drawing commissions are on the rise, but they are still in the minority. What this has meant, particularly over the last two decades, are maps that tend to protect incumbents of both parties but especially Republicans. The strategy of both sides has been simple. Pack as many of the opposition party's voters into as few districts in the state as possible while spreading out their own voters to make as many districts winnable for their side as they can. Innovations in redistricting software have made this slicing and dicing of people basing on their party registrations or past voting history an art form, allowing the line drawers to literally go street by street when it comes to crafting new districts. Yes, that's right. They use software to do this. They don't even do it themselves. 
What that approach has produced is a whole lot of seats in which the only possibility of competitive competitiveness is either in the Democratic or Republican primary, meaning no one else can run and that place will never change hands. You have there is in a state in a in a district that has been gerrymandered, you may as well not even bother running if you're going up against the major the current incumbent. So if the incumbent is a Republican, don't even bother. That's a one party district. That is so fucked. It's unbelievable. That is so fucked. You you understand. Consider this. In 1956, less than 6 in 10 House incumbents won with 60% of the vote or more, according to vital statistics on Congress. By 2002, the first election after the 2001 nationwide redistricting, 85% of all House incumbents seeking re-election won with over 60% of the vote or higher. This is a huge problem. In 2014 and 2016, that number hovered in the mid-70s before dipping to just 63% in the tumultuous 2018 midterm elections. The lack of competitiveness in general elections has been reflected in the makeup of Congress. More and more candidates on the extremes of both parties have been coming into Washington in recent years. And once they got to the nation's capital, they have zero incentive to work with the other party. Quite the opposite, actually. Working across the partisan aisle was seen, especially among Republican-based voters, as apostasy, apostasy, betrayal, capitulation disguised as compromise. And so, the 116th Congress was one of the least productive Congresses of all time because of the way districts were drawn, primarily by state legislators, in short it. Want to see how the impact of an independent commission on a state and its competitiveness? Look no further than Iowa, where since 1980, nonpartisan staff have drawn the legislative and congressional lines. The state's congressional districts have regularly changed hands between the parties, with Republicans winning two previously held Democratic seats, seats in the 2020 election. And generally speaking, three of the four districts in the state, the exception being the Republican-friendly 4th District in western Iowa, are extremely competitive every two years. Check out the winning percentages for four incoming members of Congress in the state, 62, 59, 50, and, 40, and 51. In the election in the state's second district, the Republican candidate leads the Democratic candidate by six, six votes. Talk about your votes mattering. Talk about your fucking votes mattering. Logic follows that if you, as a member of Congress, know that you represent a, a, dis a district evenly split along party lines, you're much more likely to try to find ways to appeal to voters of all parties through your actions in the House, right? Right. Now, a reality check. It's not at all clear that the For the People Act is going to become law. In order to pass the Senate, it will need 60 votes, meaning that 10 Republicans would need to support it, as well as every single one of the 50 Senate Democrats, which at the moment seems unlikely. And this article was published on the 2nd of March. And I have very bad news to tell you. It's not going to happen. The For the People is not going to happen. And it is not going to happen because every Republican has opposed it in addition to Joe Manchin. And they have said that they will not even let it get to vote because they will filibuster it. So our democracy is actively being kept worse because of people like Joe Manchin and because of the filibuster. No, they don't because of because of defector uh, uh, defector Democrats. And this has happened again and again and again for the last. I don't even know, decade, but especially over the four Trump years. You notice how basically like basically nothing that wasn't supported by Democrats or by Republicans hardcore got got through. Did you notice that that during Trump's admin, almost everything that was done was done by executive order or by uh, bipartisan support favoring the Republicans? Ha has anybody noticed that? I have. It's all I've talked about. It's all I've talked about since I started streaming. It sucks. I'm tired of talking about this, but I'm going to have to keep talking about it. It's horrible. And that is because, again, 
of West Virginia Senator Joe Manchin and the filibuster, which we can't end. Very, very sad stuff, huh? Pretty unfortunate. And this is why a lot of us political folks right now um, are, are desperately trying to get our viewers, um, our communities more involved in the, in the process. Because as it stands right now, people are kind of right. Uh, I, I don't want to say they're right, but it's, under, it's very understandable why people are checked out. I'm sure, I'm sure you all have heard about the shocking stat, stats on American apathy, that Americans just don't vote in their elections. They really just don't. They don't like it. We don't like it. We don't go vote. Why the fuck don't we vote? It's not just suppression. It's because American voters literally often don't have a say at all. And it's really unfortunate. But it's because of stuff like this. It, 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 it's because of things like this. And I ask you, I'm going to, we're going to go, um, we're going to go in a, uh, we're going to go in an, in an, in another little direction real quick. Okay. What happens? What happens when you have one party that whipped up an insurrection to overthrow a democratic vote that is constantly playing obstructionism, that currently has created a deadlock in democracy and uses that as a justification to say that democracy is over and that we need Trump to come on in and fix everything up. What happens, do you think? What do you think happens? When one faction is simultaneously playing obstructionism, making it impossible for any laws to actually pass that aren't directly in their favor, and then also whips their viewers up into revolutionary frenzy. Not good things, folks. Not good things. Things like January 6th. Things like QAnon happen. Very bad. Very, very bad. And this is why I am concerned about things. This is why I get very, very spicy about a lot of these um, subjects. It seems like both parties at this point, um, that it, they, they, they don't think American democracy is working. Well, yeah. My Wi-Fi died. What happened? <laughs> we talked about what happens when a party is able to play endless obstructionism and also convince their base that democracy is dead and that we need a strong man to take over. I would say you end up with a pretty scary situation. And, you know, we've all seen the videos of the old, of the, of the MAGA hat people saying we need a coup like we had, like they had in Myanmar. These people saying that Donald Trump will come back into power in August. Will, will, re will lead the Patriots back into having power. It's not good. Ain't good. Ain't good. They said Minamar. Okay. That was just the former head general of the special forces, not someone important. Oh, yeah. I haven't even talked about General Michael Flynn, the literal traitor, the literal person who who worked with a foreign government and was and was fucking convicted of that. I haven't even gotten into that. I haven't even begun to talk about that. That we have a 
ex a a a previous leader of the American military that is currently traveling around the country whipping people up into a far right authoritarian revolutionary frenzy who was pardoned by the former president who argued that democracy was done and that he was cheated out of the election when he lost by an unbelievable margin, a margin so large that there is no possible way that it could have been fraudulent on a hundred different metrics. And it was proven not to be fraudulent. That is a recipe for disaster, my friends. A very, very bad state of affairs in the United States. And if it ever feels like I'm being a little grim or serious with some of my political um, arguments here, it's because I am. It's because we are in a very serious situation, okay? And we need to we need to start understanding, paying attention, imps. We need to start paying attention to who and what and how this is being done. Jessica Metal brings up uh, Michael Flynn. Former General Michael Flynn, former General Michael Flynn was convicted of failing to register as a foreign agent. He was literally being paid by Turkey and other authoritarian governments to disseminate fascist propaganda in the U.S. Yep. Yep. Indeed. Remember, we have the think imps, don't we? Look at that. We got the think Think, imps. Think. <sighs> so, yeah. Quite frankly, this is a grim state of affairs. And I... Without, I don't want people to, I don't want to sound doomer here, but I really don't think that we can just vote our way out of this. Remember how I said that voting was important? And then remember how I said that right now your voting rights are being undermined worse and worse? They are setting something up. Your opponents, your political opponents, people who do not, and listen to me. Listen now. If you haven't been listening this entire time, I need you to listen now. The party that does not believe in gay marriage, the party that predominantly supports uh, 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 conversion torture therapy for gay youth, the party that does not believe that trans people have the right to exist in public, the party that votes regularly to suppress the rights of of people of color in this country, the party that is explicitly anti-immigrant, the party that constantly talks about how academics are, are, are infesting our children with Marxist ideas, the party that believes in privatizing everything, the party that doesn't believe in giving you health care is currently orchestrating a plan to make it so that your votes mean less and less and less until they don't matter at all. That is quite serious. And I would like you to remind me real quick what is the only order that I have ever given you, my viewers. I do not give orders to my viewers because you are my viewers. And that is parasocial as shit. Except for one. I have given one order. Do not die. Don't die. No, no. Liking the video is a request. Liking and subscribing is, of course, a request, a request that helps the channel greatly. But the only order has been don't die. Do you think that it will be easier or harder to keep that order, to obey that order, if these people are successful?
Because I have a feeling that it's not going to be any easier. It's going to be a lot harder. And that's why I constantly say we need to be proactive. We need to act in advance. We need to reach. We need to f fix these things in advance. We need to be we need to be cognizant constantly of the actions our opponents are taking and we need to strategically respond to them. How long will it take for QAnon folks to be deprogrammed for eight years or forever? Well, right now it's forever. Nobody is deprogramming pro programming them. Nobody can. Yes, I heard about that, Hannibal. We'll talk about that later. Well, nobody's doing it right now. They're growing. QAnon is currently growing. Now, Donald Trump has, has turned into this pathetic shell, but there are other people stepping up in his place. General, military general, Michael Flynn, is currently going on a tour around the country telling people that the time is coming soon where patriots will need to rise up. Where patriots will need to rise up. Patriots will need to rise up. What do you think those patriots are going to be doing? Thank you, Joe Inabach, for the tier one sub. Bear Scare Beauty's got it. Do you think if more Q believers were aware of HN, they'd change their minds? Probably not. They're not there because of reason. They're being appealed to on a on a level, on an emotional level, by horrifically manipulative individuals. The only way listen, I've talked about this many times. Leftists need to learn about indoctrination. Lefties of all types. Democrats need to learn about indoctrination, for fuck's sake. Indoctrination is not a rational process. It is a process of taking advantage of cognitive, uh, of cognitive biases, of emotions, and utilizing that to prevent someone from ever being unconvinced of the positions that they hold, that they've been told to hold indoctrination is important to understand and it is possible to escape indoctrination but it is very hard we have to prevent indoctrination we have to get out ahead of it because once people are indoctrinated it is very hard to escape and i say this as somebody who escaped indoctrination i grew up in a cult i did a whole video on it you fight against indoctrination by connecting with people, by communicating, by learning, by encouraging critical thought, by supporting education by protesting, by making a scene, by making it impossible for anyone to go about their daily lives without seeing the evil that is being done in front of them. It is incredibly, incredibly important.